Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we share tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over part four of our five-part series on saxophone dent repair, and we're going to be concentrating on the saxophone body itself. Uh, this is the area, of uh, the area that kind of goes from the top of the bow all the way to the receiver, and there's a lot of open areas on the body that often take dents, and we're going to show you two different uh, techniques or two different um, uh, ways of taking dents out, one where you would disassemble the instrument and one where you would not disassemble the instrument. So, Ryan, why don't we uh, start with... Well, Absolutely. We'll, 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 we'll do the, start the with, one where we have to. We, well, I'm sorry, where we don't, where we don't disassemble. Have to disassemble. So, so, obviously, it's one of those, if you can do it without disassembling, you make it a lot easier. Cool. Uh, and here. Ryan's going to be using a 5 8 dent rod, which has got a little more flex to it. We're also going to be using a, a slotted dent ball, which is got uh, looks something like this with a slot in it that is going to compensate for the pip, and Ryan's going to talk about that. Is that the alto or is that the tenor? That is, that is the alto, yeah. That's the so alto. the reason why we have a slotted dent barrel, okay, is because of inside this body pip actually protrudes into the body. Okay. Uh, if I were to take a solid one and then jam it in there, um, it would it would you know do some damage to that inside that pip there, which I've seen quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that is why we use a slotted dent barrel. Um, most important thing when you're attaching it to your dent rod is to have that slot on the underside, the the six o'clock position. We don't want to have that slot slot on the top where I have these edges and I might be you know, putting grooves or whatever into the body of the saxophone. So you want to have that out at the bottom. The other thing is when you have a much dent rod, I don't really like to have it too far out because then it gets a lot of flex to it. Okay. I like to have just enough. So if my dent's right here, that's my working area, I may work right about here. So you see, I, I do have a little bit of clearance. Obviously, I don't want to bump up my receiver into the vise. Right. But I find that right there, it's not going to get me a lot of flex. So tighten that guy up. So, my slot is on the bottom. I'm going to line this pip up so that it's on the bottom, and that way I can insert my dent rod. Okay. What I do is I use the tone holes to sight up my dent barrel. And again, if I could just take this out real quick and show you, the, the area that I like to work with is right about in here. Okay, so it's from this, this very peak all the way to this front section. I try to stay away from this edge even though it's rounded. Okay, I try to stay away from this edge. So it's basically where my finger is, that is my working area. Okay, every once in a while I'll use that, that very highest hump, but right in here. Okay. So you're lining up the pip again. Lining up the, the pip. Slot. You can see if I don't line up the pip, it doesn't want to go in. But as soon as I line that pip up with that slot, it slides right in. Okay. Like butter. Okay. So I look into the tone holes and I can see this is where, in this section, is where my dent barrel is. I'm just going to follow that right to my dent, okay? And again, just like with dents we did in the, in the bell and the bow and all that, I like to start from the edge of the dent, which causes a ridge up towards the center. So when we dent it, what ends up happening is when you dent it, you end up getting these ridges kind of where my knuckles are, okay? So what I end up having to do is press down on these ridges, and what happens, it will actually bring that dent back up, okay? So I don't put the ball directly under that dented portion and push up because this is what will happen. Now I still have ridges, but I have them now protruding even further. Mm. So I'm working from the edge of the dent towards the center, and then I will switch to the edge of the dent towards the center. You can see my technique here. I like to use my straight arms because, again, I'm using my whole body here versus my arms where I'm pushing. I'm using my whole body. I just slide like so from one edge, maybe go almost towards the center, switch it, start from one side, again, I'm rolling that dent out. I can actually feel it, that little hump right there. Right there. I can even see it a little bit. I run that, that body tube across that barrel. So again, I'm rolling and pushing and using all my weight one side to the other. Let's say it's real tough and you need to kind of get a little bit of a head start on smoothing that dent out. You can use a dent hammer. 
right? There are a variety of different styles of damp hammers. There's plastic, uh, you know, this is Delrin or metal. Um, I like to use either a plastic or a Delrin, okay? What tends to happen is when you use a metal dent hammer on brass, it'll actually work hard in the brass. The more you hit it, yes, exactly. Thank you, Rich. This is a example of a metal dent hammer, a nice smooth flat surface, which is good for moving dents once they're there. But the tendency is guys will use this too hard. Mm. You have metal hitting that brass, which tends to work hard in it, which just makes it a little bit tougher to actually remove the dent. So I like to use a plastic or a Delrin headed um, dent hammer. And you can see here, I'm going to be using this flatter surface. There's a very slight radius to this. It's not completely flat. But let's say I needed to need a little extra in there. Maybe on this side right here, there's a little bit of a hump. I'm going to use my dent rod or sorry, my dent hammer. And I'm just tapping again from the edge towards the center. You can hear it's a change in the sound. It goes from kind of a hollow sound to more of a, a thicker, almost a ping right there tick sound hmm. versus kind of a thud, a hollow thud. But again, it's the number of times that I'm using this in that glancing pattern. I'm not going straight down. I'm not building a house here. Okay. I want to kind of move this brass. Okay. I want to move from the edge of that dent and I want to move it towards the center. Same thing on this side. I want to move from the edge towards the center. And you notice when I do that, I hit in the same spot but I'm moving the saxophone very slightly. Okay. This is a little tricky to do with, with the, the dent barrel. Uh, I find it's a little bit easier to do the, the hammer method when we're using a, a mandrel, which I believe brings us to the next section. Yeah, I think we should do that next. So we could probably work this dent for a few more minutes to get it perfect. Okay. But for the sake of this video for time, let's move on to the next scenario, which is where we would disassemble the instrument. So this is when we would uh, remove the bow and bell from the body tube itself to get it uh, to be able to use a larger mandrel. So Ryan's got a body tube of an alto saxophone all prepped up. We're going to use a three quarter inch rod instead of a five eighths rod because it has less flex. It's a little more stout yep. and it, a little bit beefier. It fits into our body section mandrels quite well. The body section mandrels themselves have a counter bore. Let me grab one. Here we go. We got one right here. All right. And then we'll just while you're setting that up. So the the mandrels itself has a a counter bore so that the end of the mandrel, the threaded portion sits in there, and then the shoulder of the mandrel sits, uh, th the shoulder of the rod sits in the mandrel itself. Yep. So the threads on the, your dent rod are actually protected from shearing off. Not there that anyone's go. ever done that before. Never happened, never happened. Absolutely never. So Ryan, you're gonna be using a section of the saxophone body mandrels uh, with no slot on it. This is just a smooth mandrel. And let's check out where our dent is. Exactly. The biggest thing is matching whatever size dent mandrel to the area on the body. And you can see we have our dent right here. Very clear. There it is. Whoop, get it nice and close. But you can see that reflection. It's right next to that strap ring. Okay. Right in there. Okay, so what I've done is I've selected my dent mandrel that's going to fill that area, my working area. The, the great thing about these dent mandrels is even a lot of times just putting it on. Now watch the dent when I see what will happen if I just push this on. You see it pop up just a little bit? Okay, that's the great thing about this dent. Even just putting it on, this dent mandrel, it starts removing that dent because it's the correct taper. It's the correct taper. That's the biggest thing. I'm not using the giant, you know, six foot saxophone body mandrel lance um, with these individual body sections. Having the, the taper match up is a lot higher. Okay. okay. Um, a lot of times it doesn't match up with that entire big, um, you know, that lance. But we can see looking through the tone holes how much of a distance this covers. So this mandrel goes from here to here. So if I had a dent in any of this part of the saxophone all the way around, I'd be able to use this dent mandrel for it. So here we are. There's our dent. A little less just because of I've, I've installed it and that mandrel filled that void and pushed that dent out slightly. This is where I can start with 
Again, my dent mandrel, oh, sorry, my dent hammer here, right here, the edges. I know, there's a lot of mandrels and there's, hammers yeah. and hammers. rod talk in this video. It is. <laughs> I'm just, this thing. Ah, I'm just going to grunt and point at it. Ah. So you've got your Delrin got dent hammer. Got my Delrin dent hammer. Again, this slightly flat section here. And again, I'm aiming for those high spots because I want to bring that high spot towards the center. Or I want to kind of lift that dent up. Now, so you're using that technique, but I also see the strap ring is quite close and mm -hmm. it looks like there's some other key work there. Yep. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tight area. So obviously if you can't get it with your dent route or your dent hammer, okay, you can move to something else like so. And I think at this point in time, everybody is aware of my love with a slide lock roller tool. Mm -hmm. This thing is fantastic. Okay, what this does, it's a rolling burnisher. Okay, I could take a regular burnisher, which looks like this. Okay, it's just a hardened piece of steel, highly polished, and you use that to actually move and move that brass and, and maneuver it back into pl place. So I could use this, but the problem with that is having that, even though it's highly polished, could scratch. Now, now, can you use some uh, some lubricant with something like this? Yep, you can. I've used uh, ivory soap. You can also use uh, a piece of mylar, the drum head, the batter side, or sorry, the resonant side of uh, a drum head uh, will work any clear mylar. Um, or you can get a slide lock roller tool. And again, because this is a highly polished part right here and it's also rolling, it's really going to reduce the amount of marring or scratching on a lacquered surface. And it's plus it's really easy to use. Um, what this does by using a rolling tool on a mandrel, it, it eliminates the lumpiness in a lot of dent work that you see. Guys that are using maybe dent barrels or dent balls are just kind of pushing it up and then you get a lot of kind of humps. So what this does is it creates a nice smooth even dent removal. Again, I'm going for the ridge, which is I can feel right here that so you can really see that dent there it is there's our dent okay and i'm using the roller tool to just delicately roll it so that allows you to get up near that post Absolutely. as well as the strap ring yeah i'm i'm right up at the edge of that strap ring so if it's one of those that that dent goes right up next to that strap ring you can use something like this to roll it out and again i'm rolling as you see i'm rolling towards the center let me move it over, switch this around, actually roll again towards the center. If I need more clearance, I can move this around. I like using it with two handles because they get a lot of nice, even downwards pressure. And I'll just keep rolling here again, starting at the edge and just rolling towards the center. When I get to the center, I'm going to switch to the other side. Start at that edge and then roll towards the center. I'm not using a lot of downward pressure, just enough to kind of finagle that brass and in, back into place. But you can see we're getting there much, much better. I can still see a little bit of a ridge here, but I might use a little bit more of the dent hammer to move that in. The other thing is you can kind of push this in, make sure it's nice and tight. See if I can roll a little bit more of that out. And are you using a lot of pressure or a not a lot not a lot you can see when i just kind of press down somewhat firmly I'm not really pressing I'm not putting all my weight into it like i'm doing when i'm actually trying to remove the dent here i'm using all of my pressure to try to remove that dent if i'm using a mandrel or a barrel okay with this roller tool again this part is steel that mandrel on the inside is steel this is brass this brass is much much softer what will happen is you'll actually stretch this brass out you'll see big long streaks of compressed areas of brass and it's very very hard to remove practically impossible to remove compressed areas so so Ryan, it are. looks it looks like we're pretty much done i'll zoom in one more time on this yeah there we are let's see if we can just pull this out and we can see where that dent was it was right oh man it was oh it's right about in here there might be a little left. Again, I'm looking at that reflection. If you see a break and that nice clean reflection, 
So that might be something that might, might work a little bit more on to get that dent out. But there we are. So maybe just a couple more minutes and then we would have that perfect. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for that demonstration. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been part four of our five-part series on saxophone dent repair. Stay tuned for next Wednesday when we're going to go over part five, removing dents from the saxophone neck. Uh, we also have courses coming up on key fitting on July 22nd, and as well for, for you amateur repairers on June 21st, we're going to be doing a basic saxophone repair course. So check out musicmedic.com for more information on those courses. Uh, if you like this live stream series, please feel free to like and share and subscribe. And that's gonna do it for now. So until next time, happy repairing.